I'm Christian Burrows and I'm a Mechatronics Apprentice Engineer. Kelly Parsons, I am a Mechatronics Apprentice. With... I'm Mohammed Hanif Curry. I'm doing the apprenticeship here at MTC. My name's Emma Malabin and I'm an apprentice at the MTC. My name is Jacob Crummy. I am, I am an apprentice here at MTC. I'm engineering. We started the course in September. So I've been on this course for seven months. And so yeah, I've been studying engineering for about seven months. Um, CAD, we were studying it for about six weeks so far. So it was, it was kind of in the middle of the six weeks when we were given the task of designing a trophy. And I was only just starting to develop my skills. So it kind of gave me a chance to use everything that I've been shown so far to make something completely of my own. But like usually we were given a photo or an engineering drawing or something they want us to build. But this time it was just going off like whatever we wanted, just could be as creative as possible. I enjoy it. I like working with my hands, I like doing stuff like that. What did I learn? I think what I learned is anything's possible. Using CAD 3D design, like you can design anything. Um, big, small, intricate, um, basic, anything you want, you can actually use this, this um, software to design. And then when you print it out, you, I'm still astonished at anything I print out. I make little like parts for Meccano and things like that. And I'm like, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> so CAD would never be something that I'd even look at before. Since doing CAD and like being on the course for CAD, now looked into getting like a 3D printer and building bits at home, uh, just for stupid little things or what most people would assume a stupid little thing, like little problems in the house. Like you can just go, I can just make something. Like you can't buy something to fit that gap that I could just build and it took 10, 15 minutes to build and then get printed up. I'm glad that I did it, definitely. And I think it went as best as it could have gone. Picked up a lot of skills uh, and a lot of techniques, uh, different approaches on how to do uh, the design. I picked up a couple of skills that I'd use in like my final assessment at the end. Um, I originally thought of just doing a, a plain, simple, um, trophy you know like the cup or like the shield that you get and then I thought no this has got to be like a little bit more fun but I just wanted to try and think of something that was a little bit more challenging um, and stood out a little bit more. I'm Gareth Williams, UK Sales Manager for EAL, uh, and in the case of the trophy competition, I've been the project director. Um, it's been an absolute privilege to work with both MTC and FANUC, uh, bringing edu education and industry together to collaborate, working with apprentices uh, in their first year to design a trophy which will be gifted at the Ingenuity Skills Awards uh, to the category winners. So EAL is uh, an awarding organisation uh, with a particular footprint within the advanced manufacturing and engineering space. We we uh, certificate over 100,000 learners per annum. Um, EAL is part of the Ingenuity Group. Ingenuity uh, Group exists to work with education and industry, bringing those parties together to solve the skill shortage within, uh, the, uh, within the sector. Hi, I'm Dan Meredith, COO of Ingenuity. I'm, I'm really excited to see what they come up with. Um, I think the, the brief was broad enough to give them s some scope to be really creative. Um, it's exciting to see kind of what they're going to consider that represents engineering and their knowledge of manufacturing methods to bring that creativity to life. I'm the Programme Delivery Manager for MDC Training out of the Advanced Manufacturing Training Centre in Coventry. Uh, and my role is to um, ensure that the programmes that we offer to our employed partners are delivered to a um, high quality. Um, and that's all of the in-centre training that, that takes place. So, so we run an internal uh, competition first. So um, circa 40 learners were presented with the challenge or given the, um, the brief that was provided by uh, Ingenuity. And then from that, there was all of those learners engaged in that process. They created a model each. And then our tr two of our trainers that are, are proficient in computer design then hosted their own internal judging panel. All of the learners presented their um, their awards to the trainers and then from that the trainers whittled it down to the final five that came forward today to, to the final judging panel. I'm Andy Harvey uh, from FANUC UK and I'm an applications engineer on the robo drill machines. I think in the, in the apprentices designs I'd like to see sort of um, an all-round uh, trophy that would appeal to maybe the the modern future aspects of engineering as well as maybe a nod to the past as well. 
Um, I think it's a really fine balance to get something that's appealing to everyone, that defines or fulfills the brief and is, is pleasing on the eye. They did a sterling job and I must say that I was blown away with the level of engagement. I think that initially we were expecting, uh, when we when we socialised the idea of this competition, to have a handful of apprentices that would put their hat into the ring uh, to get involved in it. When MTC at the first Keeping In Touch call notified me that there were 35 apprentices working on this uh, particular initiative, uh, I was absolutely blown away. Um, I think that's testimony to the calibre of apprentices that um, MTC are working with and all also their organisation and the, 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 the expertise that they have in-house. So again, the, 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 the remit that we got from Ingenuity was very broad, so we had a, a, a very open envelope for us to, to kind of be as creative as we possibly can. That thing was the most exciting thing for our learners to, to, to kind of explore. What was the best thing to see from it is that all the designs were very different. Um, we had some designing robots, some through to uh, spanners, it was, it, was, it was very broad in what, what our learners ultimately provided us. Well, when the decision's made on, on the winner and we've got a, a design, shall we say, that's, that's been chosen by the panel, we're going to then have to start the important process of making it fit for manufacture. Um, it's a massively, massively uh, important question to ask of the designer or to collaborate with the designer to make sure that the person who's going to be making this product is going to be able to make it efficiently and indeed it is possible to manufacture in the first place. So to make, to make the prototypes we're going to be located in our application centre where we've got the use of two uh, FANUC robo drill machining centres, uh, one of which has got a, a five axis table on so we've got a full machining facility that we can manufacture anything that's within the bounds, shall we say, the envelope of the robo drills uh, capacity and we'll be using those two machines to mock up their designs and to make the finished articles. Hi, good afternoon. It was a real honour to be part of the judging panel. Each and every one of the designs was unique uh, in the way that it was presented and um, some made us smile, some had a great story behind them um, and all of them featured uh, one important thing and that was a real reference to engineering both past, present and, to my mind, future as well. As with any competition, there can only ever be one winner, so it gives me great pleasure this afternoon to announce that the winner of the uh, Trophy Design 2023 is Emma. Oh, Emma, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely amazed, ecstatic, like people are going to get this award like that I've created and I've designed from four weeks to six weeks of using the, the software. Uh, I never win anything. Like it's a, it's a one of them. Like oh, I never win the lottery, or I never win the radio competitions. So to win this and to see people who have worked so hard for something and to receive an award because of their hard work, and it's something that I've created and I've designed, and I get to see people receiving that and the smiles on their faces and how happy they're going to be to to receive an award. Emma was really engaging when she came into the room. Um, she came into the room with real presence, um, a, a very personable individual. Um, she talked us through the fact that she uh, is an older demographic and um, challenges those perceptions around uh, apprenticeships. So you consider an apprenticeship to be for a younger person. She's a career changer. Um, so she really did take us on a journey in terms of who she is as an individual, the, um, the ideas that she'd thought through as part of the, um, the lead up to the design that she put forward. And um, at the end uh, of the judging day, um, I actually said to Emma, if she approaches uh, the if she approaches her endpoint assessment in that way, um, she'll find that she'll absolutely breeze it. I think when you compared Emma's to uh, Emma's design to those of the other um, the other uh, entrants, it was very much a case of other designs focused on the stereotypes of engineering, so you know tools and cogs and and so on and so forth. With Emma's design, it was very much a case of 
it was forward-facing, the future of engineering, Industry 4.0, um, looking at the um, uh, looking at uh, robotics and automation, um, and naturally that had an affinity with our Fanuc colleagues because that is the game that they're in. Um, so it was, it was, it, it there was. There's a nod to the past, but there's also a very firm focus on the future uh, and the future of engineering. And in, in and in particular, and some some of the feedback that I've given Emma since uh, she's been notified that she's won, is the fact that. She'd even gone to the extent of in incorporating the Ingenuity logo into that prototype that she's, um, she's 3D printed. And I was really impressed with that because as a judging panel, we're sat there thinking, what is this design going to look like when it's gifted to the uh, category winners at the Ingenuity Skills Awards? The fact that she'd already thought of that and presented that design to us meant that when we looked at it, you could immediately understand, right, that's what it's going to look like when it's given over to people. So um, there were many sort of aspects that she'd taken into account and um, was a, a clear winner in my mind from the moment that, I, uh, that, that, that she brought it into the room. All the way up until today, I've been, oh my goodness, am I going to win? Am I not going to win? Am I going to be runner-up? And then um, so many mixed emotions. I was expecting not to win anyway, so I knew I had a, a good as chance as anyone who's who's been um, who's been in the competition. But to actually hear those words, congratulations, Emma, you're the winner. And then I was like, oh, I didn't even know what to say, where to look. <laughs> I'm so glad I did it. Like, I'm so glad it was given to us as an opportunity to be able to, to um, enter the competition. And I'm just so glad that I put my own effort into it because it makes me feel proud of myself. Um, that just doing that little bit extra, those extra little tweaks, um, it, it's all worth it. And it's absolutely amazing, yeah. I think it was fair to say that um, it was fairly unanimous, um, but let me talk you through why? Um, and it was Emma as an individual and the way that she presented and her engagement with the judging panel. It was Emma's reference to sustainability. Um, so she talked through the fact that in her spare time, she likes to craft things that are driftwood, etc. And, uh, and so she, she's got a keen interest in sustainability as an individual. It was the robotics element, um, so that forward-facing engineering, uh, you know, and the, challenging the, the stereotypes and the norm around engineering and how it's perceived. The fact that that struck a chord with um, FANUC, who ha are, are our equal partner in this journey in, in, um, in, in, in executing this particular uh, competition. Um, and also the fact that the design itself wasn't over-engineered. It, it was very complex. I'm not an engineer, so I don't understand the complexities of using CAD, but speaking with some of our engineering colleagues that were on the judging panel and speaking from their um, sort of uh, point of view, I understand that Emma's design wasn't easy to create within CAD. Now, when you contrast that against the back, uh, backdrop of Emma saying that she'd only been using CAD for a short period of time, for her to have designed that complex a design using software that she's fairly unfamiliar with would suggest to me that she's got a great uh, career ahead of her. I'm so excited is, is what it's going to look like, not just in plastic from the 3D printers downstairs, but um, actually like metal. <laughs> right, so um, one thing I, I have learned since I've been here is that you, you have to work with the machinist to be able to make your part possible. Um, there was a couple of things that um, we had to change to make it um, machinable in the time scale that we had. Um, so the embossing on the ingenuity and the award skills, we had to actually engrave that because of, of the time scale it would have taken to produce the piece that I designed um, would have just been far too long and it's far too intricate to be able to get it done um, in such a short time scale. So I've got my design here. We also changed the, um, the color of the, the metal. So we've used two different metals. We've used um, brass and aluminium. Um, the original design was again, fairly different. So we were gonna do it all in aluminium. We decided to use the brass because of the contrast in the metal as well. Um, makes it look a bit more authentic with the Fanuc robot style. Seeing my trophy um, actually being machined here at Fanuc um, has been absolutely amazing. It's like seeing something come to life from computer screen to plastic to metal. So Emma came and spent, spent a day with me uh, in the app centre where we went through the design and everything. Um, so we spent 
the morning really looking at what changes we needed to make. And then the afternoon, we actually programmed one of the parts on the machine. Emma picked it up really quickly. Uh, she, she's obviously very competent at picking stuff up quickly and applying herself and retaining that knowledge. She programmed the actual flat plate that holds the Ingenuity logo. So she used the manual guide eye, the conversational element of the fan at control to actually program that part, or at least one up on it. And, and she made a great job, yeah. It's been, been really good, actually. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the whole process. I quite, I quite like, well, I like education. I like sort of imparting maybe a little bit of wisdom that I've learned over the years. Uh, and to work with someone like Emma, who is collaborative, she, she gives some feedback. She says when things will work, when things won't work as well. So you get that honest feedback from her, which, which I find really quite refreshing. Um, so yeah, it's been great working with Emma. Do you know, I think it's still um, not real in that sense, because at the minute it's just me seeing the trophy and me holding the trophy. But I think to see people actually receiving an award for the great work that they've produced, um, the changes that they've um, incorporated into their own businesses, um, yeah, wow. Like, I can't wait to see their faces. I can't wait to see their expressions. I can't wait to see them holding it. Um, and hopefully they've got some good comments about it. <laughs>